So where, whereabouts are we heading right now? What are we doing? Uh, we are going to grab a coffee and en route we'll be going through my old area. So it's good, always good, every single time I go back through my old area it gives you a bit of a perspective shift as to how far you've come. What age did you move out of here? I Obviously. moved out when I was 26, maybe even 27, like roughly around then. Yeah. But I moved out, I mean that could sound like it's quite late for some people, but I moved out by choice by then because that was when I wanted to go get a bigger property and then build somewhere for my mum and dad. Yeah. So I kind of had to get out to then bring them with me after, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. But yeah, of course I've had responsibility my whole life, so I could have moved out when I was 22 if I wanted to, but I've never really understood that mentality. I don't know if that's like uh, a cultural thing, you know, from like having f I have family all over the world, right? So it's just, it's very, very normal for you to have your parents close to you, have your family of close course. to you, versus I understand in some places it's like you're 18 and you're out, a completely different culture. Mm. Like because this is this is the main road going all the way through. This is already like traffic central as it is. So the fact that I didn't know there's doing roadworks here, but I, <laughs> but but <laughs> in all the years that I lived there, I've never seen roadworks on this hill. Huh? Uh, things have changed. We're coming up to my paper round route soon. I might get a paper round again. A little extra cash. We could put like the TMB as like a promo in there. Yeah, like, entre like, a, like a waiver. Entrepreneur. A little leaflet. Like I used to hand out newspapers, now I own one, TMB. <laughs> yeah. What was crazy to me is that once upon a time, I grew up thinking that I'd hit the jackpot if I lived in anything like one of these. And it's not to play any of these downs, I'm sure these are respectable, but growing up, that was the, that was the, the end goal from when you come from where I live, or where I lived. That one right there, I used to walk down this road, and if I'd missed the bus up the top, I'd walk down and catch it here. You have to have so much belief when you come from nothing and I mean, look, just like these areas, I remember I used to play football around here and all kinds of stuff. You have to have so much belief in you to then go, right, I'm not gonna live this life. I'm gonna do something much better and I'm gonna help my family. And I'm just not gonna accept a mediocre life. It's not gonna happen. Like it takes so much inner strength to just not accept it. This is the main bus stop actually. All right, so if I'd missed the bus going up, I'd be walking down there. But this is the this is the old neighbourhood. This is where I used to live. Let's go in and see. She knock on the door. <laughs> yeah, I remember this video from the day in the bus. So hello, mate. You know, I used to play football right there. He'd be like, "Who is this?" That's your old garage. Yep, yeah, it's old garage, and here is the old gaff. Here it is. That's it. Yeah, so strange to look at that. So so strange. How things have changed, though. Yeah. I'll tell you what, the area feels the same, if not even almost a little bit more run down. Mm. No ball games permitted signs has been there for like <laughs> 18 years and never once listened to. You imagine at like 5 a.m. how dark all of this is mm. and I'd have this scooter that was like rattling and all you could hear is it <laughs> rattling and then me going over to the paper round shop at 5 a.m. to do my route. But I tell you what, that taught me a lot of discipline to just, I don't want to get up because I've got to go to school an hour and a half away. I don't want to get up and do that. Yeah. I want to I want to just sleep in, but I can't because I've got responsibility. So back then, you never would have realized it, but that was what was building responsibility and discipline in the first place. So judging from the title of this video, I think you already guessed why I took a break from YouTube or my personal YouTube, should I say. So I wanted to give you guys a bit of a, a backstory as to what's been going on, what's been happening. You know, I, I used this channel in the first place to kind of document more of the behind the scenes, a personal part of my life, not just the things that I do, but a lot has happened since then. So again, welcome back everyone. Just on our way to, to grab a coffee, been filming all kinds of bits. Um, for those who don't know, getting married in a few months as well. So lots have changed in that regard, really looking forward to that. And we've just gone through my old neighborhood, which is always to, always good to go back through memory lane and realize where you've come from, your roots, how far you've actually come, puts into perspective, especially when you're now managing, managing multiple different projects. I mean, I'm managing a fund at the moment, we're on route to building that towards 100 million. There's a, 
there's a lot of things that come into play with that, a lot of infrastructure. So I just had to prioritize it. Like when I do something, I have to do it to the fullest. And it got to a point where I was just making content for the sake of making content on the channel. I mean, it was still valuable content and I meant it, but when things become almost a chore, it's not really something I want to put too much time into. And I had to take a point and go, right, this is what we need to prioritize right now. And I'm glad that we did because over the last couple of years, we have built an incredible infrastructure and an ecosystem that is now just going to flourish. So now I've got a little bit more time on my hands, delegated a few things. I'm going to be showing a bit more just kind of things that I get up to, things that I do that I would never really share that people don't get to see. And really and truly the hard work that goes into maintaining success. I think a lot of times we think about success as an end destination that you get get to. That's a cute, fluffy little white dog. Um, uh, see, look, you get interrupted all the time by so many dogs everywhere. Uh, anyway, you... What is, like, what, what is like the main goal that you want for this channel? Like, what, like why, why do you want to put out the content that you've got planned? I want people to see the the level of discipline and the level of organization and structure that is required for you to maintain your success. Because a lot of people see success as, right, when I get there, it will just be fine, and then I won't have to do anything. But in actuality, you have to be able to actually work harder, I would say, to maintain everything that you've got, because then there's more to lose. Like, for example, when you're on the way up and let's say you got a thousand pounds in your bank and you've not become successful yet and you're trying to be successful, it's not really much for you to worry about apart from I just need to go higher, I need to go up. Then once you become successful and you've got assets and you've got money that needs to be allocated certain places, you can't just leave it in the bank, you've, you've got to be smart with it, you have different businesses, you have to be good under pressure, you have to manage people, you have to think so much bigger and it's complicated. So there is more on the line. So if you neglect it, it, it can fall. So I think it takes a lot more effort, a lot more bandwidth to be able to do that. So if I can get that across to as many people as possible to actually work harder than you could possibly imagine, and I could transfer that skill to you, you stand a much better chance of being successful. And you can come back to the channel and these little tips and tricks that I, I can kind of give you that I've learned along my journey of coming from really humble beginnings, as you can see, then you, you're gonna do all right. You and you went around the corner. Proper rough. Yeah. <laughs> Did you feel like... Um, Probably going to get stabbed up. 